this is an interesting one. It's a product called Hatchy, and this is the Infinite M1. It's a projector on your tabletop, which is also a touchscreen, which is also an Android tablet, which is also some sort of a fitness device. It's it's many things in one, but we're gonna jump into it. I'll try to get, go over everything. I'll try to show you how it operates. This tabletop here is about to turn into a touchscreen. Anyway, packaging, hatchy. It's like a, there's some sort of a dog theme to it, a pet theme, a friendly theme, as you can see from the little icon there. That's some pretty hefty packaging right there. This is sort of how drones are packaged at times in this kind of dense foam. Like you could store it, you could actually use this as a way to transport the thing. And you could transport it because unlike a lot of projectors, this thing has a battery built in. So I think you can get like a couple hours of battery life without being connected to the wall. Okay, so this is the unit and you can see right away where your projection is coming from, right up here. And it, it actually sits on the table like this. And then the projection comes down at an angle onto the table. It should be pretty obvious what the scale of it will be on a tabletop. You're gonna need a decent sized table. They've shown this thing off uh, on a kitchen countertop. You could watch food related content, even uh, use it to showcase like a recipe or something like that. There's an education piece where you could use it for learning. You could play games on it, but then I think you can actually lay it down flat. Am I crazy? I think you can lay it down and project onto a wall and do the typical movie thing also, but we're going to find out as mentioned. So there you get a little sense for it. Yeah, I was right. It can go like this for the touchscreen aspect or the horizontal cinema projection. Now it is an Android based system. It actually has a Snapdragon processor in it. I think it's a 600 series Snapdragon processor. The maximum output is 1080p at 100 inches when you're doing the horizontal uh, kind of broadcast onto a wall. Here is your power brick, USB type C connector on that power brick. Once again, the little friendly Hatchy dog. I didn't know this, but Hatchy is like a famous, that's like a famous name for a pet dog as well. So a little insight for you there. They've also included a type C cable to go to the power adapter there and then a micro USB to USB type A. See, that's the other thing about this. You have some ports on here, I believe. And is that hidden underneath this door here? I'm guessing. Yes, so you have you have HDMI, USB-C, and a headphone jack, and then you have your power port, which is in the Type-C configuration. So the HDMI is gonna be for an input, so you could put a game console or even a laptop if you want to use this for work as a portable projector, so you have some inputs as well. Now what's interesting, if you look at the top side here, you have the projector in the center, but these actually look like cameras on either side. And I think that's how the touch input works. It picks up the location of your hand and is uh, capable of distinguishing where your inputs are. And that's how you're able to turn a tabletop into a touch screen. There's also a remote control in the package, fairly robust metal remote control, slender. Uh, you have your home button. Remember, it's kind of like an Android tablet, so you're gonna be able to navigate an Android-like interface with this remote. Does this have power? Let's find out. Is this a giant power button? Like the world's, this is the world's largest power button right here. And if this is volume up and down, then that's also likely the world's largest volume up and down button. You're not gonna miss it. I can't say I'm mad at that though, because 
You can imagine using a projector in a dark environment, and then you're searching for tiny little buttons. But in this case, you're searching for, I mean, it's not too hard to find the button. I'm guessing, oh, there we go. Do we have to go to dark mode? Oh, no, it shows up. We're, we're okay on a table here. Now I have seen touch screen projectors before, but they're usually not portable or they have to be mounted in such a fashion, like far away where the wall then could become touch screen. What this one does, it does it all in one. So the measurements, the ratio is all figured out by the way this stands. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. By the way, it stands upright. So it's the correct distance to create the image. And it sounds like it's doing some sort of an autofocus right now. Oh, interesting. Right now, you're seeing what looks like an Android tablet. And you have your nav buttons on the bottom. And I presume, you see how I can click there? I mean, no nothing is really opened right now, but... Hey, oh, that was a kitchen application. Look at this. Look at this! We're doing a little... Doing some recipes on the kitchen countertop. And it's really responsive considering it's just on the tabletop here. Now they do make a mat for it if you wanna have like a white surface, but you don't need it. As you can see, this is a wood table and it looks fine for using. Now, do I swipe up from the bottom? I can head home. You have a back button, Chrome, Spotify, Facebook, up to down. How do I see all of my apps? Ah, there we go. So. Again, Android tablet. I believe this is running Android 9. Well, you can play games on here. You can, well, you can do anything you can do on Android, obviously. So let's boot up a game real quick. This is Alto's Adventure. Now, it's important to know, just like any projector, the appearance of it is gonna depend a lot on ambient light. Now, this is bright enough for me to see even though the environment is lit, but the contrast and the vibrance is gonna go up substantially if I had the lights turned off. So the input on this game is uh, is pretty simple. It's just a tap. You see, I do do a flip right there. Boom! Land a backflip. Okay, we got an actual uh, level here now. that jump deadly so anyways you get the idea it's I know it's hard to wrap your head around you're like he's touching the table he's touching the desk it's some pretty cool tech to actually convert my tabletop touches into tablet like touches and this is obviously quite a bit bigger than any Android tablet you would have and that's the advantage of having the projector so the way they've shown this off is kind of on the coffee table, on a desk, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in a kitchen, where it just might not be feasible to put a display or a tablet of this scale in that kind of environment. So this thing is small enough that you could butt it up against a wall in the kitchen, kind of maybe near the stove or something, and then it comes down on the countertop like that. No, it looks good. It's just the interface. Like if you had a controller, if you had one of those end, like a, Bluetooth, Android capable controller. This would be pretty cool. Obviously it'd be cooler on the wall than on the table, but it does, it's responsive to the interface. Oh, behind you. But yeah, it's cool. Obviously for a game like this, you would probably be better off using a controller, as I mentioned, and flipping the projector onto the wall. But it does work with the touch interface if you ever got really good at it. But from a gaming perspective, the touch games like Fruit Ninja and things like that are, well, they, they are easier. In fact, you have an advantage oh, no. uh, using on a, on a touch screen like this. But I can imagine a little controller here and it's a, it's a whole different experience from your smartphone for a game like PUBG. So there's also this mat here and 
This is like an optimal surface for this thing. It's kind of like a rubbery mat and it actually gives you a spot where you're supposed to put the projector to fill up the space. And you can see that it, it goes straight into the autofocus mode to figure out the right focus for the surface. There's some sort of an education mode and this is a cognitive alphabet spelling exercise. Uh, I don't know what's about to happen here. What do I do? Cooking or? Oh, I get it. Okay, I'm gonna try to make the corn soup. Yeah. What if I put, let's try to put the wrong letter and see what happens. Mmm, red. I did it! Now please take away the letters from the screen. We will go to the next step. Look, you, you might be laughing at the game, obviously, but it's pretty cool tech. It not only knows my touch input, but it recognizes the shape. And this is just one application, but it, it shows you the sophistication of the lens and its ability to determine things other than just a finger for touch. I think it can even sense more sophisticated stuff like fruits and veg. Am I, is this fruits and vegetables, Kirk? Are you? <laughs> tomato. Come on, you can do it. Oh, tomato. So the way they imagine you using this is you have now scanned the tomato. Oh, okay. So you remove the tomato now and then it tells me what to make with the tomato. You see how that goes? So I go make the lasagna or I see the fiber and the protein. What happens if I, I do some lasagna now? Interesting, cooking steps. I'm making lasagna now. If you go to the main page here, you can do, look at this, a perfect steak with the tunes. How to cook a perfect beef steak. The secret to cook the perfect steak is to preheat the pan. So they've obviously focused a little bit on the food aspect of it. I think uh, that's, that's, I mean, that's a focus here. In the kitchen, it's one of those circumstances where you have this technology and you've created this product and then you're trying to imagine where are the, where do you perceive the various applications being? We've seen project projectors that can put your media on the wall but once you add touch, then where do you envision the thing being? And I guess part of it for them is where are you lacking a touchscreen interface? The kitchen one is interesting because your gadgets can get messy, right? If you had a tablet on the countertop, you could get I don't, uh, food, food things on it maybe. And then here you turn this off. This is right up against what you wipe the, you just wipe the thing. You wipe your screen down, Kirk, you just do a quick wipe, you see how that goes? Mm -hmm. So I don't, maybe that's the angle. They also put in a fitness app, which gives you a variety of different exercises. And it's not just a video, it will play the video on the projection of each exercise, but then it will also map your body. So when you do the exercise, it will tell you how effectively you did it based on the location of your hands in space, your legs, and then how well that matches up to the corresponding exercise. It will tell you like good, excellent. And there's just a bunch of them built in. I don't know, it could be like a push up, could be a plank. There's a variety of different exercises that they have in their app. But this is mainly to showcase the capacity, the, the capability of the tech that's baked into it. Uh, these are just some of their pre-built applications, but there could be more. And if, uh, if a developer wanted to take advantage of the sensors inside of this thing, they could be able to merge the projection and the camera for alternative inputs from Strictly Touch. I mean, there's a web browser on here. There's pretty much anything you could do on Android is on here. And if you want to just watch Sean YouTube, you can do that. And, and the speakers, and maybe we should blast what the speakers roll. are iPhone 12, uh, we've got some pricing leaks. In, in the leak, as you can tell, it's uh, very gracefully for And your touch interface works as expected. 
We have pricing for the iPhone. Uh, I would actually say the, the speaker is a surprising attribute because, I mean, it is a, a fairly big chassis there. So you, you may expect it, but sometimes on products like this, they could skimp on a speaker. Uh, the speaker's actually half decent. To uh, oh, you can hear it have the their device appear as being something different. Listen, this is one of those things where it's a new concept. The actual application for use, sometimes you're not exactly immediately aware of it. You're like, okay, so I have a touch screen on a projector now. What am I going to do with that? And then you kind of discover things like this as you, as you explore through the various apps and things that are available wh where certain things translate really well, other things that are more designed for a smartphone display or a tablet, maybe less so, like say PUBG, for example, where you probably wanna have an external controller to take advantage of the bigger display and then sit back a little bit. Then there's applications like this one where it's a touch keyboard and now you have almost like a full-size keyboard and the extent of what's available on Android in the form of music production apps and then things kind of get interesting. I'm not saying you would use this particular app for music production, but you see where I'm going here. Places where you would want a big touch interface. So anyways, they're working on some cool stuff. It's called the Hatchy Infinite and they want you to use it in your kitchen, possibly for fitness, or you can discover your own variety of ways in which something like this could be valuable to you.